Hey, what's up, Rattlers? So, one of the coolest lizards in the world are the spiny-tailed iguanas. And if you agree with me or don't agree with me, well then just comment below and say, yeah, Dave, I agree with you. Spiny-tailed iguanas are the most amazing lizards in the world. But there's a couple of breeders around the world that are working with these lizards, and one of them is right here in Arizona. So, Kelly Paul has designed his entire backyard into a spiny-tailed iguana breeding facility. So, Kelly is going to give us a tour of his iguana breeding facility here here in his backyard and he's going to share a little bit of his knowledge about how to breed these lizards and also give us some care tips on how to care for your spiny-tailed iguanas at home. I'm Dave Kaufman and I tour the world to see how reptiles are living in the wild and while I'm at it checking out some of the most amazing facilities and reptile expos as well. It's all about learning, appreciation and conservation so come with me and join my reptile adventures. At Zilla, we are dedicated to the innovation of caging, lighting, and equipment solutions that provide proper husbandry for your pet's long and happy life. To see our entire catalog, visit ZillaRules.com. Over here. Oh, I love the Angel Island Chucks. And then what I put in with the Angel Island Chucks are some young conspicuosa too. Um, on San Esteban Island, there's San Esteban Island iguanas and San Esteban Island Chuck Wallace. These are from Angel Island. Oh, look at those. And that's a young conspicuosa. What I really like about these is, well, he's cold now, but they're friendly. Well, people don't realize that, you know, it's Arizona, but it gets cold here. Yes, yes, you know? it definitely gets cold. We'll hit freezing temperatures, not real often, um, but it will happen, and that's why I have the cane, the cane heat mats, and that's why I cut everything down uh, so more sun can come in uh, during the winter months, and like I said, easy to check. Uh, and then in the summer, I let everything get big and overgrown, and usually around October 31st, November 15th, somewhere in there, cut it all back so I can see, especially this exposure, mm -hmm. it doesn't get a lot of sun. When these guys are fired up, they're just really bright white, especially as the age, and when he's probably two, so he's a future breeder. This is a group of, uh, of, an, of adult conspicuosa, and usually with these guys, yeah, there he is. Yeah. When they're adults, the males keep their, even when they're cool and cold, uh, he's a little gray. But they just turn, they just turn paper, paper white. He's yeah. still shedding, but they're just white as can be. And a lot of the, the gray spots and spotting in here just disappear. But super, super animals. And this is another one that's just, like I said, they're, they're, they're pet worthy. They're, they're just friendly. Yeah. Because hot or cold, this guy's just, he's always been, been a good pet. I don't know how long I've even had him, maybe 15 years. Uh, another interesting thing with the pectinata, I went down to a little town called Camotete, Bagdiruato, that whole Sierra Madre area, and uh, the pectinata, young males, old males, females, a group of them would live in a hollow in a Cardone cactus. The, the natives down there, the Mexican people said, hey, we'll cut it down for you. I said, no, 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 leave it alone. But it was just interesting to see. And then they'd also live in the rafters. Some of the people would eat them. Some of them would keep them as pets in their, in their, in their home, not as pets in their home, but running around the home. But super, super, like I said, it just, just kind of put some things on its side thinking that they can't live together. They can, but in captivity, I've never seen it successful. Interesting. At least not for me. Huh. At least not for me. But in the wild, I, I don't know. And it's it kind of gave me a... They have a simple life from what I've seen in the wild. They get up, they bass for a couple hours, they go out, they get some food, they come back, they head bob at each other, chase each other off, and then all of a sudden here comes dusk, and they all go to the same... They all go to the same little hole in the Cardone cactus. Or in a shed or a raft or something like that. Right. Real, real interesting stuff. All right, and then getting into the... Getting into more Tinos. These are uh, 
these are kind of new to the hobby, I guess maybe five, six years ago. These are these are the Panda Pectinata. Yeah. And I got real lucky. Um, I got some I got some in. I had a female that was gravid. She laid some eggs. And these guys are awesome. One of the things about keeping them outside is you have to monitor their weight. You have to check them. Things can go south real bad. I'll probably bring him in in the next uh, two weeks or so, depending upon the weather, because they will stop eating right about now, and I want to breed them. And also, I breed a lot of my tinosaurs inside. When I breed inside, I bring them in around the beginning of January. It just depends. Sure. It depends, but I breed, breed them inside. And and these guys are super friendly. Yeah, Moby. Look at that. They're just incredible animals. I mean, it's just, like I said, I, I got these as pets. I just like pet lizards. I'm the weird kid that never quite grew up and just... Aren't we all? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> these are so underrated. That's why I wanted to do this video. These are the, the, the Tinosaurs. I think there's a lot that are underrated, and these are just... I, what I like about the Tinosaurs, and I, I, I bred Tegus reds and blues, and I enjoyed them tremendously, um, but what I like about the Tinosaurs, they, they, they climb, they're a little more active, they're, they're nice, but I mean, I can't say one bad thing about a Tegu either, but the Tinosaurs to me are just, I don't know, they're my, they're my thing for whatever reason. Absolutely. So on that note, you know, you have outdoor enclosures, so you don't need to really worry about UVB, UVA, all that stuff. You get it all naturally from the sun, yes. but do you still give vitamin supplements and calcium supplements? N only on the babies. On the babies, uh, I'll give calcium supplements, I'll dust their crickets. But as far as the greens go, the babies are all housed outside on the patio. As far as greens go, no, no supplements at all. Gotcha. So when it comes to breeding these guys, you know, you keep them outside all summer long. Mm -hmm. you, breed, you bring them inside in the winter because yes. it's too cold here in Arizona for them. Mm -hmm. um, and that, do you give them a cool down while they're... Uh, so I'll give them a cool down. They'll stay outside perhaps for one more, one more month till January 1st. And actually in the olden days, I kept them outside with the heat pads. And uh, when I only had a pair of yellow pectinata or a trio, I should say, I keep them outside year round, and then in the in the in the spring and summer, I'd have eggs. And now next door here, these are the siblings, but you're breeding these for the black color. I'm breeding these for the black color, but I'll be honest, I don't know if I breed black to black if they're going to come out like this. If right. They're going to come out more black. So this is the, the brother to the white one. Yep, and that's the sister. And that's to the white one. a little sister right there. And she's a little. She's she doesn't try to bite. Um, and she's a she's a big one. What I notice is the black ones grew bigger, faster than the than the whiter ones. Really? And then this guy's name is is Bean just because of black bean. I don't know why he named it Bean, <laughs> but he is just I this guy is I I like this guy a lot. He is he's a very handsome yeah. fellow. <laughs> really? Yeah, really. He's serenading me. Look at that. He's <laughs> singing Sinatra over here. You better not think about biting, buddy. <laughs> My pet. Yeah, I like I like I like these guys a whole bunch and just super super man I can't say enough I just I love these stupid lizards what's wrong with me I'm leaving finish the thing on your own yeah, yeah. it's so funny because I I want to kind of cut back but what do I get rid of I like it all yeah absolutely oh here's some more so here's a this is a fig tree uh, it's a mission fig so during season. This fig tree will feed everything for for a week or two, and that may be all that I'll feed them for a week or two. And I think maybe even in the wild, I notice figs in the wild, so they may yeah. they may feed on a certain plant for a certain time of year for a long time, and then it's gone, and they move on to something else. And then I I don't know. I like to garden, so a lot of my stuff goes to the to the lizards too. But uh, green leaf lettuce, red leaf lettuce. Red romaine, uh, butter crunch lettuce, red mustard, three to four different types of mustards, mustards, mustards. I've also grown collards. Um, I give them radish tops, carrot tops. Look at this. I give them the whole pea plant. They eat, they eat that. Um, and tomatoes I grow in the spring, so I'll grow small tomatoes yellow pears and I'll throw the tomato in there and they'll actually catch it in the air sometimes it's pretty uh nice pretty amazing and then what I planted is Tacoma stands 
These are the yellow flowers. Those are orange flowers. Those are called orange jubilees, different varieties. And I use all these flowers for all the babies and the adults. It comes in real handy. Then mulberries behind us. I'm able to use all the mulberry leaves, the young mulberry leaves in the spring and the fall. So you grow all your own food? I try to grow a lot of my food as much as possible. I also will buy uh, romaine. And uh, grape leaves are great for everything too. And uh, we'll get back to the garden, but I use radish tops, carrot tops, carrots. Wow. I try to grow, I don't know, I like gardening too, I guess. So look at how amazing this is. So you've got all of these enclosures and then you've got this little food garden here. So <laughs> yeah. you are completely self-contained here. I'm trying, I'm trying. That's like I fantastic. said, I still buy romaine and, and spring mix. Sure, sure. So you're getting your uh, iguanas and your tortoises to eat figs? Yes. God, my guys yes. won't touch them. Really? Yeah. Yeah. The I'm the one who winds up eating them all. And then these are the yellow pectinata. Yes, these Watch I love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's not Dave friendly there, is it? No. All right. This is a little male yellow pectinata. And then one thing I always do, usually they're tame, but I always try to approach them from, from below. Right. Kind of like a parrot. Kind of like a parrot. And this isn't a, exactly a tame male, but he's not a... He's not a mean one either. I never thought about that. You're right, kind of like a yeah, bear. yeah. And he's one of my, he's one that I use for breeding. Here's his two little cage mates. I'm just so glad those 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 came into the market. Yeah, I had never even known about them. Um, so so whenever they came in, I think like I said, four, five, seven years ago, six years ago, and I think. Ty Park had imported some as as, as babies. I'm I'm not sure, but Underground had them and just neat, neat animals. Yeah, they really are. What you're saying is you never stop learning. You never oh, stop you innovating. Never, never stop learning. Right. And then I've, I've, I don't know how to put it. I'm not full of myself. So I don't think I know it all. And another thing I think people should, should, should take is take all the suggestions and then work with them and then see what works for you too. But I, I think one of the worst things that people can do is is sometimes I'm surprised when I learn new things, but I never, I never go. No, that won't work. And I'll implement it. I'll give it a try. And maybe it works for me. Maybe it, maybe it, maybe it won't. But, and that's uh, how we learn things. And that's, that's how, how we do things, things better. Yeah, yeah. I'll never claim to know it all. Because <laughs> as soon as you anything. think you know it all, you don't know it all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In this cage, old rhino. Old rhinos in this cage. Kind of my starter, my starting old rhinos. I'm now, I now have. Uh, third generation and these were brought in by uh, a friend of mine Bob Blom from Europe sure in the little small female and she's shedding oh look at that and these guys have done better than I ever thought they would have uh, with the cold that we have I mean they just they, they they don't drop weight like a lot of my other tinosaurs and I'll also bring these guys in and breed them inside too and they're fairly, they're fairly, fairly mellow. When I went to Roatan Island, so I know they're rare and endangered, but in the areas where I've seen them in Roatan Island, they were plentiful. Yeah, right. Um, I also seen an all white one, just, just solid oh, white. Wow. So I figure that one must be a bazillion years old. Yeah, <clears throat> over there they call them uh, Wish Willies. And the, uh, I'll never forget the place we stayed at was called the Sea Grape Inn. <laughs> and uh, I asked the lady there why they call them Wish Willies wish willies and she said uh, we don't like him so we wish willie away <laughs> so that was kinda... how can you not like these <laughs> i know it but apparently they didn't like them over there um they liked the green iguanas but they didn't like these wish willies really yeah kind of strange it is kind of strange one of the funny things about some of the tinosaurs too if you wake them up or you kind of surprised, they can be a little bit on the grumpy side. Yeah, yeah. And these guys are a little naturally a little more grumpy. But I've got some of the babies that I kept back and they're not so bad. <laughs> Stop it. Go, oh, jeez. Where do you want them, Dave? You want them? All? Yeah, right there. Woo! Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, he's just a bit grumpy. He's just a bit grumpy. What's funny though is a lot of the times they, they don't bite you. They just well, I'm not gonna yeah, try. It's all display. It's all display. Like a bull snake. Yep. And these I would say they make they make good pets, but if if I'm thinking of pet iguanas, I'm thinking conspicuosa, uh the yellow pectinata, the pied panda pectinata. What else? Melanosterna too, believe it or not, if you get them when they're young. And they get big and bulky, and I have those inside because I wanted them to, to color up because they they can they can be pretty boring 
not colored up or not fired up. Sure. They're fired up, they're just unbelievable. Oh, and Baker Eye. Baker Eye make great pets too. Nice. So on that note, for people that are just getting into these lizards or that see this video and say, I've got to get my hands on those, what advice do you have for beginners that are just starting to work with these? Uh, my advice would be find a reputable breeder first off and then get a lot of people like to sell their stuff, you know, right out of the egg, a month old or six weeks old. If you can get some one that's two months old, three months old, or four months old, it's better. Don't be afraid to get a yearling that might be a little grumpy because you can start to handle them right away. If you get bit, it doesn't hurt as much, and they they all calm down. The only, maybe on the pied pandas, you don't want a yearling because they, they can put on quite a bit of size right away, and you'll be good. And handle it. Handle it. Start handling it right away. If you do have a bitey one, and you pick it up, what I've found is I just put a piece of banana in its mouth and then when it's eating its banana, just kind of mess with it and, and you're good to go. And there you go. Yeah. And if they bite you, they, they kind of have a tendency to hang on for a while. So. Yeah, they pit bull you. Yeah. yeah. Well, with my iguanas, I you know try to have at least 20 to 30 minutes of interaction every single day. Oh, that's great. Yep. That is great. And if you can do that, I mean, you have a pet for life if you're able to do that. This is a pair of palears. These guys, they're not going to look good now, um, but but they're neat lizards. Woo! Neat, neat lizards. And this guy yeah. got his dewlap tore off last oh. last year by the female. But I've got one inside, a young male from him. Um, just just cool lizards, big thick tails, thick bodies, um, and they can be friendly. You know what I they love about really these is, is the comb. Oh yeah. It's that like super huge comb that they can't really kind of stand up on their own, so it kind of flops so it over. It kind of flops over. Yeah. And well, that's how they got the name Tinosaur too. Tino means comb in Latin, and Saur is, is lizard. Lizard, it's right. Lizard, so. All right, so in here we have an old pair of oh, baker yeah. eye. Old pair of baker eye. They turn just a powder, nice blue. Wow. And he's got like a little. And the, over time, he, they, they, some of them look deformed over time, and actually, it was the same one I went to the, uh, he's usually, I've never seen him quite wanting to bite. I don't think he'll bite. These are super, super mellow, too. And these guys get this weird, I mean, these these things just turn thick and long. And, and they've got that, like, powder blue. Powder blue. Yeah. And they're, they're pretty variable. They will turn just light sky blue, like turquoise. Yeah, I saw those over at Ties. Yeah, they're they're just neat. Some of them, as they age, I've seen them turn white. When when they're fired up, they're unbelievable. Yeah. It's like, you just, man. There are some neat iguanas out there. And one one of the things too, on inside the cage, inside their hide box, there's there's the heat mat. But I have plenty of places where they can also hide. So it's hiding boxes within a big hide box. Sure. And it works pretty well. All this right. is the. Reptile room slash bike repair room. There you go. Slash boat repair room <laughs> slash scuba gear repair room slash anything. It's the catch all. So I just recently got these from Jerry. And these are the uh, Alfred Schmidt eye. Ooh. Um, and they're not even fired up all the way, but this is a female. I got a trio from Jerry and then a young, young pair from Jerry. And uh, he fed a lot of Zufobas he said they did well with. I haven't tried them on Zufobas, but I'm doing uh, strawberries, bananas, lettuce, flowers, and I got uh, edible plant in there, a pansy, and nice. um, just just neat, neat lizards. And these are uh, Pied Panda Pectinata babies, along with one young pair of uh, yellow, yellow Pectinata. But I like these guys. These guys are so... These guys are about six months old and they're so variable. They change so much. They're starting to go through their color changes. All right, so there's there. a green one there. So they're born green. They're born green. And then they go through just, each animal is a little different, but they'll go, they'll go to dark gray to black and then they'll turn orange and they'll turn yellow. Then they might turn green again. They are all, I've never seen anything develop like this. The, the yellow start to get yellow and then the yellow come, the yellow continues to come in. So they'll get their adult black and white colors within what? Uh, you'll start noticing it within a, within a year, the, the black and white. And I mean, I can even see some white coming in on, on this one. But uh, honestly, right now, um, I don't know what the indicators are gonna be for more white or more black. Right, it's kind of the luck of the draw with these. Kind you know, you never know what you're gonna get. Yeah. And what's funny is four days ago he was green. 
Four days ago, this one was green. Yeah, so you can see that, like I said, the color change starts happening realistically two to three months of age. Just don't know how to describe it. It is all over the board. They'll turn yellow, they'll turn orange. You're wondering, wow, what happened? What did I do? And then at the end result is actually just a really nice black and white lizard, some with more black, some with more white. Some 50-50. And what are you feeding them here? What is that, uh, that mash? That's, uh, that was strawberries and bananas. And with all my babies, I feed dusted crickets. Um, once, twice a week, sometimes four times a week. It puts on size, uh, uh, and I feel like when I sell an animal, they're, they're getting a good, healthy animal. I also have some dubias that I raise up there. Great. These guys are the Tinosaur Milana Sterna. They come from Honduras. Uh, Mainland Honduras and also uh, Hog Island. These guys, and I brought them in. This may be a mistake, but we're gonna get them out. I brought them in so they'd be fired up. And if you work with them, they're spectacular. If you don't work with them, eh, maybe not so much. Yeah. The first one I'm bringing out is, uh, I bought back a male, but he's, it's a European line. Bob Bloom brought him in uh, quite a while ago. And here we go. And so what I do with these guys is I try to build their trust instead of just grabbing them. And he's a little puppy. Right, grabbing them is the worst yeah, thing you can do because then they the feel like they're under you attack. You can do. So I try to build up the little trust and then kind of grab them behind the front legs and the back legs. Nice and gentle. And he'll probably color up right before our eyes. Um, Look at and that. what this particular line does, hey buddy, take it easy. Let me get over here where I... Sure. What, what, but what this particular line does is it gets real silver um, with blue in the summertime. Oh my goodness, I don't know how to describe them. They're just, they're just, they're just unbelievable. Stop it. Wow. And, and these guys actually recognize their keeper, um, but I bought back a son of his, and I'm so happy because it's real aberrant, real different, and he's a little beat up, the son that I got from him. But these guys can make great pets too. Just be prepared to do the to do the work early, and when you get a big animal, you'll be fine. He's even starting to change his color a little bit now. You can see more of the the white, light blue, silver coming in. Just heavy bodied, big, beautiful. Oh, look at that. He is flaring up right in front of us. Yeah, this guy I worked with for a while. This guy's probably in the somewhere in the vicinity of 15 years old, and they seem to just continue to grow and get bulky. Sure. So this other one. I may have to grab him, but he's the son of that one. But he's, as opposed to the yellowish greenish head, he's exhibiting a, a heck of a lot of white, so kind of like a paleoris, right? And uh, and a lot of orange in the dewlap. He All may right, take a jump. Let's see your technique. He may take a jump. If he takes a jump, I'm grabbing Ooh, him. Oh wow! No, oh, stop it! You know what? I'm not going to be so gentle on you. And he, oh. <laughs> he, uh, he, I just got him back just a few months ago. I'll go over here. This seems to be my happy look, but, but look at the dewlap. Well, I should have showed you the dewlap God. on the other one. That but just, this is really unusual for Melanostern, just this coloration. And he'll fire up silver and blue just like the other one. But uh, just the amount of orange um, and the amount of white on his body just like i said i'm super stoked to get him back he's almost calico look at that yeah he's almost calico but i look forward to working with this guy and getting getting babies from him i hope sure. this year and then keeping him back then keeping a female and crossing it back to him trying to improve this little particular color trait and again it's a lizard you have to work with when you get them and i would say get them as a baby keep them for a year and then when they're a year old or six months old start working with them so you don't snap off any tails or anything and Good advice. You'll be you'll be set to go. So Rattler, see what I mean about how just absolutely amazing these lizards are. And again, comment below and let me know if you think that the spiny-tailed iguana is the most incredible lizard in the world. And if you don't think so, comment below and tell me what you think is the most amazing lizard in the world. But anyway, I'm going to be here in Arizona filming a couple more episodes. So hit that subscribe button when you do hit that bell so you never miss those uploads. And until the next reptile adventure, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on.